Today we're going to build this RC airplane called Joy Trainer Mini. Welcome to Joy Planes RC. We're going to be making this aircraft out of foam board and this is a very portable design. By the way, this video is a short version of the mini course on how to build this airplane, which includes a full length video showing the entire process in detail and extra videos explaining the connections of electronics, radio setup and more tips not shown in this video. You'll also have access to our Discord private channels for members only. More information can be found in the description below. To start this project we need the plan, so you can download it from the description below in different formats. You can order the prints in A0 or A1 sizes, or you can print it at home in the tile version, but then you have to put those pages together. Also a full list of materials and components are in the description below as well. We're going to cut all the pieces from the plans to use them as templates. Then we're going to put them on top of the foam board to draw the contour of the shapes with a ballpoint pen. I recommend placing all the parts as close as possible to save a lot of material. This airplane was designed to be built with foam board, but I think it will be also compatible with XPS foam or similar foams, as long as the foam thickness is 5mm. So start drawing the shapes on the foam board and for the lines that are inside of the shape I just use my ruler to make the lines. Once we have drawn all the shapes on our foam board, now it's time to cut all the pieces and for that we need a very sharp knife. In the plan you will see three different colors in the lines. The black line represents a normal cut. The blue line represents a 50% cut or maybe just a score on the material. And that's to make the material weaker so it bends easier or to make the hinge point of the control surfaces. And the gray lines are for references. Take your time while making all the cuts and for straight lines use a metal ruler so it turns out better. Now in this part of the fuselage I'm going to make those cuts I was talking about represented by the blue lines. The idea here is to cut a little bit of the material and to avoid cutting the last paper layer. After the cuts are done we have to open it like this because we have to remove the excess material in this groove. We have to do this by hand because that way we ensure that we don't damage or cut the paper layer that is holding all the pieces together. After this material is removed, now we can bend the walls and put them in place. In the plan you will see the symbol that signifies lateral. That means that the walls have to be on the sides of the ceiling per se. So I'm going to finish preparing the other part of the fuselage and then I'm going to start gluing everything. Also, I'm gonna finish cutting the rest of the pieces, like the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. The elevator will need some reinforcement in the center to make it stronger. A popsicle stick will do the trick. And now I'm going to start using my hot glue gun. Use good brand's glue sticks to ensure good adhesion. The brand I use is Loctite. The next step is to put glue on the grooves of the fuselage. Put the parts in place and let it cool down. Meanwhile, you have to make sure that everything is aligned. You can use a square to measure the walls and they should be at 90 degrees from the table. Here I put them together while the glue is cooling down and that's to make sure that they will fit when it's time to glue them. Here you can see a close-up of how the walls are on the sides of the other piece. 
Now it's time to glue these two parts of the fuselage. So we put glue on the edge and then we join them together. The top part of the fuselage should be facing down on the table in a very flat surface, thus to make sure that they are aligned. Also make sure they are aligned on the lateral axis, that is, they are not bent to one side or another. Finally I'm going to glue some reinforcements on the inside of the joint made out of little rectangles of foam board. Our fuselage is taking shape, but now we have to put the lower plate composed of two different shapes. The longer plate have to be bent into a little curve to fit the shape of the fuselage. Check the alignment several times if possible. If you find a misalignment, you can fix it in this stage. Now to complete the lower plate we are going to glue the frontal part, which we have to mold also with a curvature to fit the shape. The Joy Trainer Mini was designed to be compatible with small and cheap motors like this one. This kind of motors are widely used in drones and this is a 2205 motor. It's 2300 kV and is very cheap. This is the motor base we are going to glue after the reinforcements. So first we are going to glue those reinforcements and then we are going to glue the motor base. Now we're going to glue that top cover that is going to behave like a hatch to be able to access the electronics inside. We have to mark where we're going to bend it because we have to adapt it to the shape of the fuselage. And then we're going to cut it a little bit to make it behave like a hinge. And that's the only part we're going to glue to the fuselage. We are also going to apply some glue to that first cut we did in the beginning to harden it a little bit so it can preserve the shape. Now the following part is optional. I'm going to glue some tabs up in the nose to be able to glue some magnets and that way I will close it very easily and it's going to be very convenient. But you can also use a barbecue skewer or some wire to close the hatch. This is not shown in the plans, so it's up to you how you want to close this hatch. Let's carry on with the horizontal stabilizer and let's make the 45 degree cut between the elevator and the actual stabilizer to make room for the elevator to move freely in both directions. This 45 degree angle cut should be made to any of the control surfaces and it's done very easily. And now we add the reinforcement to the elevator. Here I'm doing the same cut to the rudder and vertical stabilizer and I recommend using the table to make a straight cut. Then we make a fitting test of the empennage and we proceed to glue them. Remember to keep these surfaces very well aligned. Otherwise, you will have some trouble to make this airplane fly. Our fuselage and empennage are ready, so now we keep working on the wings. And this panel is going to become one wing. So from the inside we're going to make a half cut in the leading edge and then we're going to make those 45 degree cuts to make the bend of the leading edge easier. It 
It's also a good time to cut out the ailerons. If possible, peel off the layer of paper from the inside to save some weight. This is optional, since some foam boards have a little bit stronger layer of paper and it's a little bit harder to peel off. Following the plans, we are going to mark these five different lines parallel from the leading edge at 10 mm distance from each other. Then we are going to make the half cut and this is to make easier the shaping of the wing with a little curvature. This is very important because this will create the airfoil shape of the wing to generate lift. To create that shape, we are going to use the edge of the table and start bending the material. And of course, this is only done to the upper surface of the wing. I put the wing on top of the plan and that way I compare where everything goes. And then I mark some guides on where the reinforcements should go. This reinforcement is also known as spar. This will join the upper and lower surfaces together and also maintain the same thickness throughout the wing. As you can see, following the plans, I glue in place and it's very easy. Then I apply glue to the other side and to the trailing edge. A little bit of sanding on the root side of the wings can help to fit them together. Here you can see in detail the internal structure of the wing. And here you see the leading edge. It's perfect. In the event that you cut a little bit the layer of paper, then you use some clear tape to fix it. To join both wings, I'm going to use this plywood piece that will go in the center and it has the angle of the dihedral. So I'm going to glue it to one wing first. Meanwhile, I'm going to glue the magnets to the hatch. And now we are going to glue the motor base. Take into account that it should have a down thrust angle. This should maintain the airplane in level flight when you punch the throttle, otherwise it would pitch up. That incidence should be from 3 to 5 degrees in this model. There should also be a lateral incidence to counteract the torque effect, but I found in this model that it's better to leave it centered in the lateral axis. Before gluing the wings together, make sure to have in hand the dihedral gauge. Place one wing flat on the table and the tip of the other should be raised according to the dihedral gauge. Before gluing them though, make a fitting test. You can also modify this model and make the wings flat to have more maneuverability. In that case, the center plywood piece should be straight and you can also add flaps, dividing the ailerons for that purpose. Finally, I add clear tape to strengthen the joint even more. I'm gonna use a little bit of sanding to round the edges of the fuselage of the model. This also applies to the leading edge of the surfaces of the empennage to make them more aerodynamic. Okay, now I'm gonna start preparing the electronics. First, I'm going to solder some connectors to the motor. You can do that or you can also solder the cables directly to the ESC. And now I mount the motor. Be careful of using very long screws. They can reach inside the motor and break the coils. Use shorter ones instead. Now it's time to put the control horns and servos.
Before gluing the servos down, we have to connect them to servo extensions to be able to connect them to the receiver. So I use these extensions of about 20 centimeters and then use some tape to secure the connection. To mount the servos on the wings, the process is very similar. Maybe it's a little bit more comfortable if you open the space for the servos before gluing the wings. Also make sure that the servos are very well embedded in the wing so it is more aerodynamically efficient. In the event that the tip of the wing in the trailing edge is loose like this, use some glue to harden it a little bit. To make the connections easier from the aileron servos to the receiver, I'm going to use this multiplex connector. One side will stay connected to the receiver and the other to the servos from the ailerons. And that way I just have to plug one connector and nothing else. It's especially good if you're using also flaps when you have four servos in the wing, you just connect one plug and everything is connected at once, saving a lot of time in the field. For now we're going to jump to the next stage and we're going to paint our model. This is also optional, but I prefer to make it look good. So I'm going to cover all the parts that I don't want paint on and I'm going to use some red spray paint. I've also created some experimental designs using vinyl and laser cutting to make this lettering. Now we are using barbecue skewers on the places to strap the wings with rubber bands. We are going to use this rectangular piece and put it under the trailing edge of the wing. This is to give the correct incidence or angle of attack. Without it, you will feel that the airplane is going to climb all the time and you will have to feed down elevator. I also put a little bit of hot glue on the sides so that the wing can fit perfectly because of the dihedral. And the technique that I use to secure the battery is by using a piece of plywood and rubber bands. I glue the plywood and the rubber bands will stay there so I can strap the battery with those rubber bands. It's a very simple technique, but it works. Of course, you can also use your own techniques to strap the battery in place, like the use of Velcro.
Now it's time to make the landing gear. I'm going to use these very strong steel wires. These are 1mm in diameter and they're made for push rods, but I'm going to use it as landing gear and this is the way I'm going to do it because these wires are not too long. But of course if you want to buy a dedicated landing gear made out of aluminum or carbon fiber, it will work best. I'm going to place a rectangle of plywood in the inside to reinforce the area where the landing gear is going to be. The best way to join these two wires together is by soldering them, but I don't have a machine for that, so I'm going to roughen the surface a little bit and then use some nylon string, very strong and tension it, and after that apply some CA glue or epoxy. And now it's time to secure the wheels. Since I'm gonna be taking off and landing on grass, I'm gonna use these big wheels, they are 2.75 inches in diameter or 70 millimeters. But if you intend to take off and land from a very flat surface like asphalt or concrete, then you can use smaller wheels. And this is a very simple suspension system that I came up with, with this tension spring. This is not completely necessary, you can replace that with a solid wire and that way it will be very strong. On the tail I'm going to add a static wheel. This should be enough but if you want more control on the ground then you should modify this and connect it to the rudder so you can steer the tail wheel. We still have to put the control horns on the ailerons and connect them with push rods to their servos. For the push rods I'm using a very common wire which is a bit soft. I did the set band on one side and in the other I did an L band. Then the set band is connected to the control horn. The L band is now easier to put on the servo arm. And after that with my pliers I bend the wire again to lock it in the servo arm. This common wire is not the strongest out there, but because it's too short it's not gonna be a problem moving the control surfaces. These pieces are shown in the blend and we should have two of them. They are used to cover the openings on the extremities of the wings. This is also optional, but they look better with this. For this motor I'm going to use a 7x4 propeller, two blades, and I'm also going to use a spinner to make it look better. The spinner is totally optional, it also restrains a little bit of airflow to the motor to cool it down. So during summer, maybe don't use the spinner or use one with holes that will let the air through. Basically our airplane is ready. Now we have to put the battery inside and prepare it just like if we were going outside to fly it and balance its center of gravity. This step is really important. The point where it should be balanced is shown in the plan. So I marked down those spots on the wings and using some homemade tools started to balance it. It should be completely balanced or the horizontal stabilizer should be a zero angle of attack. You can also fly it if it's a little bit nose heavy, but never try to fly it if it's tail heavy. Now check your radio setup, the direction of the control surfaces. For now, we are ready to go on fly. Here we are on the field. When you put the new battery, make sure to check the center of gravity again. That's why I marked those spots on the wings, so it is easier to balance it on the field and make sure that the center of gravity is okay. If it's not okay, then shift the battery back and forth until you get the right balance. Do this with every new battery you change, unless all the batteries you are using are the same weight. 
If you have little or no experience in flying RC airplanes, I recommend you first taxiing on the ground and see how it handles. Try to make turns using the rudder, and if it's your first time flying, avoid windy days. Then start gradually incrementing speed and maintain the airplane straight. With higher throttle, it will tend to go to one side, in this case to the left. Your mission is to maintain it straight until it has a good speed for takeoff. The takeoff should be very smooth and climb gradually. If you start climbing too steep, you will lose a lot of speed and enter in a stall. Also, don't over control the airplane, because you could easily lose control. That's why using exponentials and also the right aileron throws will help with this. The fact that this airplane is very compact makes it very portable and maneuverable. But it can also be tricky to fly in windy days. And after you are comfortable flying, now try to land and take off again. Landing is a very good practice and can be very challenging. This is definitely a good project if you are starting with RC aircraft. It's very cheap, easy to build, and it has all the characteristics of a good model airplane. Remember that practice makes perfect, so don't be afraid to fly, and even if you crash, that's something completely normal. That happens all the time even to people who are experts. Crashes makes you realize mistakes, and mistakes makes you grow and learn. You can get the mini online course for this project on the link in the description below where you will see the full length video of this project along with extra videos where I'll show you how to set up the radio, the electronics and some other features. Thank you for watching and being part of this great community and I'll see you in the next project.